Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is uh, Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering IIT Kharagpur. We are at the beginning of uh, the module 7 or the 7th week lectures. We will be discussing uh, equilibrium equation in polar coordinate system. Because uh, the type of problem what we will attempt this week is requires the polar coordinate system. Uh, polar coordinate system, I want to mean not in general the coordinate system will be our highlight of discussion. Our uh, main aim will be to discuss the uh, discuss and develop the equilibrium equations, compatibility equations and other theory of elasticity equations what we have already learned with respect to Cartesian coordinate system. So, those Cartesian coordinate system expressions we need to convert uh, in polar coordinate system. And in this particular case it is not exactly polar coordinate system what we will be using. We will be using a, a similar to a cylindrical coordinate system. So, the difference between polar coordinate system and cylindrical coordinate system uh, may be imagined something like that uh, the polar coordinate system describes with with angle and um, and uh, radius a position of a point in a globe or in a circular manner or in a spherical manner whereas in case of cylindrical system uh, what we can imagine that uh, it is it is a cylindrical uh, body which is being described by the system. The other way in mathematical sense what do we say that it has a an axis of symmetry. So, for uh, things which are having axis of symmetry generally we, we consider the cylindrical coordinate system and accordingly we go forward. So, we will come to the equilibrium equation derivation in this uh, small lecture step by step we will learn how it is done. And before that uh, as usual we, we let us come back to the slides of recapitulation. Uh, it is, uh, is important slide uh, in the sense what we have covered so far uh, in the lecture series or uh, lectures whatever we have. Um, so far described. So, history of uh, aircraft and aerospace structures analysis is the first topic what we have discussed uh, in that we have learned that famous physicists have contributed a lot uh, while we discussed about the structural analysis. They have discussed uh, how what is the material a material behaves, how a material behaves, uh, how many constants do we need to describe a material behavior. Uh, there was so many confusions initially and then finally, there was uh, a consensus that for isotropic material, again if we talk isotropic, what is isotropic that is also a matter of question. So, they defined, discussed isotropic, they defined that E and U are the two constants which are sufficient to de describe linear elastic material. Again I use the word linear, linear elastic. So, they also have discussed linear elasticity, non-linear elasticity all those things and slowly they have uh, developed, they have proposed analysis theories 
not only static analysis theories, they have uh, proposed discussed analysis theories related to dynamics also or say the time dependent load under time dependent load how structures behave and then and then we de got defined that what is structures, how anything bears a load and then uh, we have come across that uh, maybe there are some specific structures which are predominantly used like plates and cells and we have also seen that uh, the cell structures development have taken place uh, in the last uh, few years back. The basic fundamental developments uh, have been have been done by scientists, physicists, researchers uh, in, in maybe in last 50 years also. So, with that we have uh, looked into, into the history of aircraft also, development of aircraft uh, starting from the Kitty Hawk by Wright brothers. And then uh, we have come across uh, more than 100 years, almost 120, little less than 120 years. And we have uh, crossed huge steps starting from monocoque to semi monocoque structures. And uh, from structures point of view from isotropic material use to the orthotropic material use, from material use of metal to plastic. Like that we have learned the other developments, uh, mainly we have um, put our stress in terms of structural analysis. Then uh, various types of external loads, uh, conceptual structural details we have learned. So, um, because an structure, a structure is supposed to withstand loads. So, where from loads come into that structure or on an aircraft. So, that is important. So, we have discussed various uh, situations, various uh, flight regimes, maneuvers during which uh, which portion gets uh, stressed more, uh, which portion is designed in a overall manner we have discussed that. We have seen that there are speci specific groups who, who takes care of all these design part. Uh, it is not that uh, somebody is sitting on a desk and designing an whole aircraft. Uh, there are experts uh, who, who finds out the type of loads and uh, they disc um, estimates those. There is a, an agency known as airworthiness agency in every country almost it is there. So, they look, look looks at the critical conditions uh, from where the maximum load is in encountered uh, by an aircraft. So, according to, according to that uh, some schedule procedures have already been lay, laid out and people follow that, engineers, uh, designers follow that. And uh, those various types of loads we have discussed uh, to some extent in a overall manner. We have seen how the uh, structures are fabricated from thin wall uh, members uh, from forming using the process of forming how thin wall, thin plates, thin sheets are bent according to the required section type. And then those are used uh, how those rivets are done all those things we have dis discussed articulated portions of wing fuselage we have seen. We have not analyzed those, those parts are may be done in detail in some other course. Then uh, other things like flight envelope we have seen, load factors uh, we have seen, many many more things, shear force bending moment diagrams, uh, all those things on fuselage and wing we have seen. Uh, we have seen energy methods for deflection, we have seen, uh, seen uh, approximate methods. We have seen studied um, theory of elasticity, Cartesian coordinate approach. We have solved problems. We have seen that there are 15 unknowns. We need 15 equations uh, considering equilibrium, stress strain and strain displacements. And then what we have uh, come across today is that uh, formulation uh, of, uh, of 
a problem which which requires uh, some other coordinate system. We have solved problems also in last lecture and previous to that and today we will go into the uh, formulation or say derivation of the equilibrium equation in polar coordinate system. So, let us start with that. So, in that uh, what we will do the general equations in polar coordinate system we need to find out. The first equations what we will attempt today is the um, equilibrium equation. Before we go into the equilibrium equation it is uh, it is to better to describe what is uh, there on the right hand figure. This figure what do we consider and how do we do that is described here also in a, in a, in a very concise manner. What we are considering that uh, again as I told you we are considering axisymmetric portion. Say there is some structure which is axisymmetric about the z axis, z axis is not shown which is from this point towards me, me or on the other side. So, if it is uh, if we follow the right hand coordinate system it is going from me to the board that means it is coming this way and the, it is going the other way to the board. So, it is something like this x is coming to y and z is coming down. So, anyway that part the axis of the symmetry we will not discuss here, what we will discuss here that we are considering a small element uh, given by this 1, 2, 3, 4 and give named as p, p is the center point of that element and what do we see that uh, there are two the radius of point p is as it is said o p is equals to r up to this point it is r and we see that there are uh, two red other radial components which are uh, d theta by 2 apart from the theta or on the other sense we can say that from this point it is d theta apart two radial planes which are perpendicular to x y plane is cutting the element and two cylindrical plane say from this point to this point, this point to this point are cutting uh, this element. So, this element is having two straight edges to curved edges given as name 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, this element is theta at theta degree angle with respect to the x. Now, we have uh, we need to find out the equilibrium of that particular element to find out the equilibrium of that particular element. We have uh, given three components of stresses here. Those components are sigma r, sigma theta and tau r theta. Okay. So, it is to better to define what is r, what is sigma r and what is sigma theta. Sigma r is for this part particular element or in this coordinate system we are uh, describing the stress experienced uh, in the radial direction. Okay. So, that is the reason r is given here and theta, theta is perpendicular to any partic particular radial line or plane. Okay. This, this is perpendicular to this plane given a notation sigma theta. So, perpendicular to this plane acting outward as tension considering positive is given as sigma theta and as usual there are complementary shear stresses of shear stresses come always in pair. So, those are given here tau r theta, tau r theta, tau r theta, tau r theta and with respect to the plane the name subscripts and brackets are introduced as 1, 2, 3, 4. And these are also given 1, 2, 3, 4 considering the plane where it is acting. So, let us see what is written here uh, and read uh, almost the same thing is described here in a very concise manner. Let us see. In discussing stresses in plates with circular holes, circular rings and discs, carved bars of narrow rectangular cross section with a circular axis etcetera, it is advantageous to use polar coordinate. 
So, why do we need polar coordinate? That is what is said. It is, advent, it is advantageous to discuss it in polar coordinate, while there is a problem of uh, a circular hole in a plate, circular rings or disks, curved bars or narrow rectangular cross sections, bars of narrow rectangular cross sections with a circular axis. In the, those cases, if we consider, if we discuss with this uh, type of coordinate system, it becomes helpful. The position of the point in the middle plane of a plate is then defined by the distance from the origin and by the angle theta between r and a Cartesian and a certain axis O x fixed in the plane. Let us now consider the equilibrium of the small element 1, 2, 3, 4 cut out from the plate by the radial section O 4, O 4, O 2, O 2. It is something like a plane acting on this normal to the plate. That is the reason it is saying normal to the plate. It is, uh, it is, it is uh, difficult to. So, it is acting like this and by two cylindrical surfaces, cylindrical surfaces 3 1 normal to the plate. So, it is the same figure, we need to refer this figure for uh, repeatedly for derivation. So, the normal stress components in the radial direction is denoted by sigma r the normal component in the circumferential direction is given by sigma theta and the shearing stress component tau r theta, each symbol representing stresses at that point r and theta. This is the point r theta, which is the point p of the element, point p of the element. On account of variation of stress, the values at midpoint of side 1, 2, 3, 4 are not quite the same as the value of sigma r, sigma theta, tau r theta and are denoted by sigma r 1, r 2, r 3 like that. So, it is said that since there is we are considering that there is a variation. So, if that is the reason these are components are given some other subscripts. The radii of the sides 3 and 3 1 are denoted by r 3 and r 1. The radial forces on the side 1 is sigma r 1, r 1 d theta, sigma r 1, r 1 d theta is this area d theta multiplied by this we are considering unit width in the z direction that is the reason it is not coming. So, this length is r 1 d theta multiplied by sigma r 1. So, that is the force considering unit width or unit depth z direction it is the force may be written as sigma r r 1 d theta and similar to the radial Similarly, the radial force on side 3 is minus is given because it is acting in the opposite direction. That can also be got considering this and we get this equation. So, these two components of forces we have now. Let us see the other components. The normal force on side 2, side 2 has a component along the radius through p of sigma theta 2 r 1 r 1 minus r 2 sin d theta by 2.
So, if this is d theta by 2, it is very very thin line. So, this component is as it is given here as sigma theta 2 r 1 minus r 2 sin d theta by 2. So, it is acting in this direction that is there is in the minus is coming here and sin d theta by 2 is very small angle that is the reason we can directly consider that it is equals to d theta by 2 that is what is said and this change of length that uh, radius is considered as dr. So, this becomes minus sigma theta 2 dr d theta by 2. Similarly, from this also we will have one more component uh, if I draw it will become a little bit clumsy. So, we can easily imagine that one more component will come say that is also coming in this direction. So, similar way that uh, one is this is also d theta by 2 and accordingly we get this value. Now, the shearing forces on side 2 and 4 gives uh, side 2 and 4 this is side 2 and this is side 4 considering 2 this side positive this minus this dr is the total force considering again z unit depth summing up forces in the radial direction including body force r per unit volume in the radial direction we obtain that this is coming here as sigma r 1 sigma r uh, not this one this this is uh, described in the previous slide this component this component is this component this is this component as it is given this is this component as it is given and this CR portion here whatever is given and this is the body force. So, we have in the radial direction this is the equation and we see how this equation changes. So, in this what we have we divide the previous equation with dr and d theta and what do we have is that sigma r r 1 minus sigma r 3 by dr half sigma theta 2 plus sigma theta 4 tau r theta 2 minus tau r theta 4 by d theta r small r equals to 0. So, if the dimensions of the elements are now taken smaller and smaller to the limit 0, this is nothing but considering the limit, the first term of the equation is in the limit of del sigma r r d r, this gives del sigma r r d r. The second becomes sigma theta, it is average, average of two sides and the third this also becomes del tau r theta del theta. Now, if it, it is a term multiplication of two terms, if we expand this uh, using del d u v del x that uh, multiplication of two variables uh, derivation concept if you use the equation of the equilibrium in the tangential direction may be derived in the what do we get is this equation sorry this is for this statement. 
So, what do we get is this equations from this component we get this as well as we get this component sigma r by r and the remaining is whatever we have this is this component r is getting divided this is this component. So, all the components after getting it in the radial direction we have this equilibrium equation and the process what is shown already uh, considering those process if we consider in this direction the equilibrium and in that direction equilibrium whatever we can get is the equation the equation of equilibrium in the tangential direction may be derived in the same manner the two equations take the final form as 1 by r del sigma theta d theta del theta plus del tau r theta del r plus 2 tau r theta by r equals to 0. So, we get the equilibrium equations considering the body forces in case of polar coordinate system or uh, particular case the cylindrical uh, application or cylindrical coordinate system because we are not considering the z considering asymmetric portion of that. So, with that uh, we, we proceed further the equations are the equations of equilibrium to solve two dimensional problems by means of polar coordinates. When the body force r is 0, they are satisfied by putting this expression with respect to phi the stress function, stress function already you have you are introduced to. So, this how do we get this expression we will we'll prove in the next lecture but let us consider that if we transfer the stress function expression we get uh, this stress function expressions and if we put this stress function expression in the previous equilibrium equation we those those are satisfied. So, with respect to that we define that sigma r is equals to 1 by r del phi del r plus 1 by r square del 2 phi del theta 2 sigma theta is del 2 phi del r 2 and tau r theta is 1 by r square del phi del theta minus 1 by r del 2 phi del r del th theta equals to minus of del del r of 1 by r del phi del theta. This is the popular way generally written where phi is the stress function as a function of r and theta. This of course, may be verified by direct substitution. The to, to yield a possible stress distribution, this function must ensure that the condition of compatibility is satisfied. The Cartesian coordinates, in Cartesian coordinate this condition is as we have uh, already seen grad 4 a, uh, phi is equals to 0 or biharmonic equation is this. So, this uh, is our next task uh, in the lecture forthcoming lecture we will uh, come across about um, finding out the equivalent expression in polar coordinate for the compatibility equation. So, with this uh, note uh, we come to the almost end of that lecture and uh, what we have learned in this slide is equilibrium equations in polar coordinate system. We have derived, we have derived uh, the polar coordinate system equations uh, for a axisymmetric case and we will further uh, find out the solution or um, compatibility condition with uh, uh, this topic we come to the conclusion concluding slide today and thank you for attending this uh, lecture we will come back again with the compatibility equation thank you.